Welcome to the tutorial on evaluating health information on the internet. Use the questions and consider the points in this tutorial when trying to decide if you can trust a source of information. Any honest, health-related site should make it easy for you to find out who is responsible for the information on it. Often this can be found by clicking on About Us, which can usually be found at the top or bottom of the site's main homepage. You can get an idea about who runs a site by looking at the letters at the end of the URL address, called top-level domain names. It's important to know the mission or purpose of the site. It's usually related to who runs the site. In most cases, this information could be found by clicking on About This Site or About Us, which is usually at the top or bottom of the main homepage. Another thing to think about, who the website is written for. It should clearly state whether the health information is meant to be used by lay consumers, patients and families, or healthcare professionals. Most websites will offer you a way to give feedback on their site. If the site has a chat room, blog, or message board, is there a moderator or someone who monitors user interactions? Does the moderator check facts or just remove offending posts? Is the information based on scientific facts, or is it based on opinions or personal experiences? Personal stories, often called blogs, testimonials, or anecdotal reports, may be quite moving, but they may not apply to you. And a few people saying that they've done well on a certain treatment, which may not even be true, doesn't mean that most people will. Good information comes from studies that are done on large groups of volunteers using careful methods to be sure that the result actually reflects what's being tested. More reputable websites will list references from scientific journals that support the information they give you. Does the site tell you how the information is reviewed to be sure it's correct? For example, is the information reviewed by experts in the field? How often is it reviewed? Who writes the material on the site? Try to identify the authors. If the authors are listed, are their credentials included? Information in the fields of health and medicine change almost every day. The standard of care a couple of years ago may no longer be the standard of care today. Web pages should include the date the information was posted. If information is more than a couple of years old, you may want to look for and compare it to more recent information. Websites that exist only for health information should not ask for personal information like your social security number, credit or debit card numbers, driver's license number, date of birth, or mother's maiden name. This kind of information should only be given when you have a trusted business relationship with the website and are sure you are on a secure page. It may not be easy to get answers to the questions and concerns discussed in this tutorial. Even some reputable websites may fall short in certain areas. Another helpful way to size up a website is to look closely at what's there. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission has developed a list of claims that should make you suspicious of a website. We hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching.